Rogers TV, the voice of college football, doing what should have been done a long time ago, fixing scheduling across college football. The non-conference and the conference scheduling is screwed up, and here's why. It's not fair. It needs to be balanced so we can possibly compete for these division championships on the most even playing field. This is what I mean. Okay, let's start with the ACC. Here is the ACC scheduling for 2018 within the conference. All right, last season, let's keep in mind that the Atlantic defeated the Coastal in 30 of 56 games. So the Atlantic versus the Coastal, not counting the ACC championship game, Clemson 38, Miami 3, but the regular season games, the Atlantic had a slim margin of victory, 30 games to 26. So that helps out the formula. So right now, there is a designated rival for every team in the ACC to play in the other division. So most of you know that in the ACC in particular, they play eight conference games. Well, you've got seven teams in each division, so you play the other six teams in your division, so you've got to play two teams in the other division. So you're missing five opponents out of 13, so it creates a very unbalanced and unfair schedule that plays into the conference championship heavily, and it shouldn't. So it needs to be as balanced as it possibly can be. It's difficult to do, but it can be done, and it's not that difficult. So every team in the ACC has a division, non-division rival, and that doesn't need to be the case. So this is done in the SEC and the ACC, and it means something for particular rivalries, but there doesn't have to be rivalries across the board. So yes, Florida State plays Miami every year. Clemson plays Georgia Tech and North Carolina and North Carolina State get together. That's great. They should play every year. But that doesn't mean every team in the ACC needs to have some made-up rivalry. Wake Forest and Duke is not necessarily a rivalry. Yes, they're in close proximity and they both play in North Carolina, so there's a bit of a rivalry there. But it's not necessary that Wake and Duke play every year. Louisville and Virginia, you're calling that a rivalry? And how about Boston College and Virginia Tech? Do they really need to play every year? So this is what results. Florida State has its games against Miami and Virginia Tech. So the Virginia Tech matchup is a round-robin process in which Florida State only plays Virginia Tech once every seven years. But they play Miami every year. Flip it around for BC. They play Virginia Tech every year. They play Miami just one out of every seven, but it turns out to be the same exact non-division schedule for both Florida State and BC out of the Atlantic Division. So it results in those two teams having to play two teams that went 12-4 and four in the ACC last year. Look at on the flip side. Syracuse plays Pitt every year, and this year it's their turn to play North Carolina, 1-7 and seven in the ACC last year. North Carolina State plays North Carolina every year. The Heels, of course, went 1-7, and seven, and they played Virginia in 2018. They went 3-5 and five in the ACC. So the composite non-division opponents for North Carolina State and Syracuse went 4-12. and 12. So is this really fair that if you are competing for a division championship against one of your chief rivals in your division, and you play each other, and you play five exact opponents within your division, so you only play two different games. The two teams that you have to play went 12-4 and four in the conference last year. The two teams that I get to play went 4-12 and 12 last year. That doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't need to be. So keep the rivalries of Florida State-Miami. Keep North Carolina and North Carolina State. And I'm good with Clemson and Georgia Tech. The two fan bases... And the two traditions there, it means something to Clemson and Georgia Tech. Little else to the rest of us, but we'll keep Clemson and Georgia Tech. That's all that needs to be uh, kept. And we'll get to our scheduling system here in just a second. Out of the other division, we have almost as bad a situation. Not quite as drastic, but Georgia Tech's two opponents, Clemson, its rival in the other division, and Louisville went 11-5 and last year. Duke's two opponents, Wake and Clemson, went 11-5. and five. And then on the other end of the spectrum, Pitt gets a break with Syracuse and Wake Forest, who went 6-10 and 10 last year combined. This is what you do. Okay, keep the three rivalries we talked about. Otherwise, you just match up another team that will do its best to balance out those two games to try to get to that 
composite uh, record for your two opponents in the other division. Everybody should be playing, if this is done correctly, be playing two games against two opponents that went a combined eight and eight in the conference last year. Makes sense, right? There are just a couple things that make that impossible. That's the first one right there. And that's pretty close at 30 to 26. If the Coastal would have won two more games to make that 28-28, then it could be possible. My formula for everyone to play an 8-8 eight and eight non-division schedule would be possible. But because of that, it can't happen. Also because of the rivalries that were keeping Florida State-Miami, Clemson-Georgia Tech, and North Carolina-North Carolina, North Carolina State, it's not quite possible. But I can come a whole lot closer to a balanced schedule competitively than this. In my schedule for next year, Florida State up there taking on two teams that went 12-4 and four last year. No, this year they take on Miami and North Carolina. Those two teams went 8-8. Eight and eight. Boston College, instead of facing that 12-4 and four schedule, well, Boston College takes on Virginia Tech and Pitt. So those two teams went 6-10. and 10. That's the worst it gets. So I'm going to go through all the schedules, all the games, and I'm going to display them graphically at the bottom of the screen so you're going to know under my system who plays whom in 2018 or whatever year we pick this up. But the worst records and the best records that are played, the top is 9-7, and seven, and the worst, one team, I couldn't quite squeeze it out to keep it all within 9-7 and 7-9, seven and seven and that's what I was able to do with 13 of the 14 teams in the ACC. But for the other team in Boston College and Louisville, they have a 6-10 and 10 opponent's record out of division. That's how I'm fixing the ACC, the SEC, the Big Ten, and the Pac-12. Big 12, you got it right, not because you wanted to, because there was uh, teams, of course, programs that left your conference, and that lines it up so everybody plays everyone. This is the best we can do. It's much better than this. Check out the results at the bottom of the screen. That's how we're balancing out the scheduling and making it competitive and bringing back a true champion as close as we can for a conference that plays just eight conference games against 14 opponents. Therefore, you miss five games against five opponents in your own conference. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please subscribe and check out the audio as well. Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Podbean.